Good morning. Um, Meg and I are going to take you through some of the uh, processing of the uh, abundant apple supply from the big old grandfather apple, the uh, apple tree that Woody and I found yesterday. So this is called an apple slinky. Um, it's an incredibly useful tool. It, it can peel and core. We're going to keep all the scraps because Meg's going to take you through making a, a vinegar soup. Um, generally I just take off the top and put that either eat it or put it in the, for the vinegar pile and then just break it off so it makes a complete ring. You can see how quickly the others have browned. And we're going to lay these out in the sun and do most of the drying there, but they are on dehydrator racks. So if the sun goes away at this time of year in autumn, we resort to the dehydrator. And you can also just, we use fly screens, we've made a drop from the tip and you can just cut down these to any size you want. So these actually pull apart and then you can, with a hacksaw, you can just chop them down to whatever size. And these fly screens are really handy for drying fruit on large scale. Another thing that we make with um, wild apples is this wild apple and hawthorn fruit leather or fruit jerky. Really great source of um, vitamin C for the winter months. If someone would like the recipe for that, we have a poem recipe online. Um, and these are the apples dried. So I'm going to teach you how to make some vinegar. Now there are two ways to make vinegar that we do. Uh, one is that we make a juice and we set that aside in a crock or a food grade bucket like this one. Uh, so it's best not to use metal but I guess you could do it in stainless steel um, although we have never done that. Um, so there are two ways. One is that you can make juice and set that aside. We put a cloth on top with a rubber band around it and the other way is to do a scrap vinegar like this. And often I find the scrap vinegar is a little bit weak, the flavour at the end, and the juice one is a little bit strong. And so I mix the two and it's just right. So scrap vinegar, we've got our apple slink here, or you could just, if you wanted to just peel your apples and core them just with a knife and a, a potato peeler, you could do that too. Um, so I've got them in there. I'm just gonna get uh, a spoonful of honey, or you can use sugar if that's your preferred. So we have our own honey, so this, makes sense for us. So I'm just going to put some honey in there. That's just to make sure there's enough sweetener because especially if the apples are quite tart, tart variety or a little bit young, I'm just going to make sure that all of the scraps are covered with water. And I'm just going to stir that honey in. It doesn't need to be completely dissolved because it will dissolve by itself over the next few weeks or, to, or a week. So what we need to do is to make sure that all of the scraps are under the liquid because if they're not then it will they will go mouldy. So I just get a plate and cover it like that. And then I'm going to get a jar. I've just got a jar full of water. I'm just going to sit that on top. So now if you have a look it's just going to act like a weight to keep it down. It's not going to act like a weight, it is a weight to keep it down. And so for the next week or so, I'm going to have this sitting on my fermenting table and I'm just going to agitate it like this, just to really bring all of the sugars from the scraps into the liquid. And then in a week's time, I'm going to strain it into another food grade bucket or a crock 
and I'm going to cover it with a cloth with a rubber band around it and then just set it aside. And in about six weeks that will turn into a delicious vinegar. So the first part of the fermentation it will turn to alcohol um, and in this case it will be quite weak alcohol but still alcohol nonetheless and then after all of the, the alcohol molecules have been digested uh, it will turn to vinegar. And it's very simple and we use vinegar for lots of different um, reasons. We use it to when we're making a bone broth um, we put a little bit in in the beginning just to draw out all the minerals from the bones. We um, use it for cleaning and salad dressings. So there you have it, very easy apple scrap vinegar and nothing gets wasted. And at the end um, we give them, um, give all the uh, sort of that a bit cardboardy or soft and mushy uh, scraps, we give it to the chickens and ducks or to the worm farm or straight into the compost. Okay, another thing we like to make um with wild apples uh, and our own cultivated apples as well is uh, using the second fruit so the bird attacked or the fallen fruit or the second or the, the smaller fruit um, uh, that's not so good for either eating um, or dried fruit etc so all the kind of what would you call the scrap fruit um, turning it into juice for cider um, and then make, may also make vinegar, as she mentioned earlier, from it. But um, I like to make cider. Mm. So this is a steam juicer. How it works is that there's water placed in the bottom and that goes onto a heat source. Uh, in the middle is the chamber where all the, uh, the juice collects and this is the hose for getting it out. And then in the top, the fruit, you can see I don't have to core it. I am just quartering apples because other fruits you can just throw in. It, you don't need to do anything softer fruits, but with apples we quarter them, but keep every all the parts in. So it's really quick to uh, put one of these on. So the basic thing you need to know with steam juicing is, um, <clears throat> You've got to keep the water up, don't let it run out. So you're always just checking the bottom of the pan, topping it up every half an hour or so. Apples take quite a bit of time. Other fruits take no time at all. As long as you can re-inoculate with a wild yeast, or board if you want to buy yeast. There's so much yeast around for free. I can't see why you'd want to do that. <clears throat> the other thing about wild fermentation is that you're you're working with wild microbes that are in your own biome, that are already on our skin, in our ho homes, in our gardens, in our forests, um, and attract. Yeah, you can attract more beneficial yeasts um, like going out and foraging some dandelion flowers or some juniper berries and a whole host of other things that are uh, if they're the ones you want to attract to make your cider they're particularly good otherwise you can just um, do, do the old method which is pressing um, and allowing uh, keeping the vessel the fermenting vessel open for about three days for yeasts to find it and then you close it off um, and put a uh, an airlock on it. So this is, um, good morning, Will. this is uh, a library grape wild fermented um, with some grape skins. So I put, um, this was pasteurized just in here, all the grapes, but um, I put a little sachet, a little uh, uh, cloth bag um, of crushed uh, grape skins in here to, to be the activator, to be the wild yeast and then took that out after three days. Yeah, so this is a fermenting jar, four liters. We do four liters at a time. It's a nice little scale and we just do lots of these sorts of processes all the time. So there's water in the top here. You can just see the bubbles coming up um, and any, uh, all the carbon dioxide is released um, out, but nothing can get back in. If vinegar molecules, which follow um, the cider or alcohol making 
molecules get in, it'll just turn it to vinegar. People say, uh, gee, you have your vinegars and ciders next door to each other. We don't have a problem with that. As long as you have airlocks, uh, as long as you're quick when you do the bottling, like in order to bottle this, I put it into a, another, another vessel which has a tap um, and do that all very quickly. All right. Put the lid on top of there. That's ready to go onto our stovetop. Um, when it comes out, it looks like that. So this has got a pop lid. It's a recyclable pop, pop lid. Basically, it's up on the stove up high so obviously because this is gravity fed and then you simply fill up uh, the bottle the jar put the lid on it and as it and as it cools the lid um, clicks in and seals it so another thing that we like to do is with apples is to stew them and when you decouple yourself as much as you can from the monetary economy and you rely on the gift exchange we have so we have fresh apples and we will wrap some individually and put them in our cellar so in the middle of winter we can have fresh fresh crisp apples so we have fresh apples we have apple cider we have apple vinegar we have dried apples stewed apples and we have um, apple fruit leather so it's good to do lots of different kinds of things with the apples. Um, first of all, because we have a lot of them, particularly in this region where we live. Um, so it's good to process them in different ways so we can enjoy them, but also to share it um, and to give value to, to them. So I'm just going to finish my stewing here. And not all of the skin comes off. That's okay. We'll just sort of crush them, put them in. And the amount of water that we add into our fruit, our pot of fruit depends on the, how juicy the apples are. So these are quite juicy, so I'm going to put uh, about a third to a half uh, of water in there. Okay, I'm going to put a lid on and then stick it on the fire. Then it goes next to our steam juicer. So here we have the apples, fresh apples from the great grandfather tree. We have the dried apples. Um, sometimes if I forget about them in the, if we forget about them in the dehydrator, like these ones, they can be a bit crispy. Uh, you can just rebrand them and remarket them as apple chips, which are really nice. Um, or sometimes I'll just break them into small pieces and put them into our um, sponge when we're making a fruit loaf or cook them up in porridge or something like that. Um, here we have our apple and uh, hawthorn berry fruit leathers, really yummy um, and full of vitamin C. Uh, over here we have some apple cider, wild apple cider. Uh, this is just the um, great grandfather apple juice. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of the steam juicer. Here we have our apple cider, scrap apple cider in the making. Um, and I've just been jiggling this. Um, and then in a couple of weeks we'll strain it, let it sit there and ferment. And then this is um, some apple cider vinegar that we had in the cellar from last year. And there's so many things that I like to do with, with vinegar. Um, so this is one, um, this is like our, flu, I call it our flu shot ferment. We call it mistress tonic. So this is, um, it's got so many things in there. So it's um, ginger, turmeric, onion, garlic, horseradish, rosemary, black peppercorns, um, all different kinds of peppercorns. I can see we've got chili, um, we've got some um, dried orange peel. Um, what else? We've got some cloves in there. So I've got lots of things in there um, steeped in apple cider vinegar. So when we're feeling a little bit vulnerable or a little bit run down or a tickle in the throat, then we'll have some of this as an immune shot, immune booster. Um, and this is one that I made the other day. Um, this has got hawthorn berries, uh, rose hips, some mallow, and I can't remember what else I put in there. I haven't labelled it yet. Oh, and some um, borage uh, and rosemary. Um, so I'll let that steep for about six weeks and then I'll 
um, strain it out and use it uh, and there you go. Well, lots of delicious things that you can do with apples.